I recently read the book, The Coaching Habit by author Michael Bungay Stanier. When one of your friends is in a stressful situation and they come to you for help, how do you coach them through it? Do you offer them advice? Author and world-renowned performance coach Michael Bungay Stanier says, your advice is not as good as you think it is. To be a great coach, you need to spend less time telling someone what to do and more time asking good questions. There are four excellent questions in The Coaching Habit that you can use to help your friends, your teammates, or your employees to find their way out of overwhelming and stressful situations. I personally found that these four questions are actually a great way to start journaling and coach myself whenever I feel stressed. Question number one, what's on your mind? When you ask what's on your mind, you invite the person you're coaching to skip the small talk and get to what matters. Stanier says, rather than talk about the weather or how their sports team is doing, and any other superficial, boring, and simply useless chit-chat, get to what matters. What's provoking anxiety? What's all-consuming? What's waking them up at 4 a.m.? When you ask what's on your mind, you're essentially saying, I'm here for you, and I want to help you work through whatever's bothering you. But if you ask what's on your mind and you still feel like they're holding something back, follow up their answers with what else? What else acts like a pressure relief valve? It gives them permission to open up and allow important but uncomfortable issues to flow out. Stanier says, asking what else creates more wisdom, more insights, and more self-awareness than any other question. But there's one downside to asking what else. You may get flooded with a long list of challenges. They might tell you about those four projects they're worried about, the five people they're frustrated with, or the two angry emails they don't know how to respond to. It's tempting to pick out what you think the most important problem is and start offering advice. But if you tell someone what to do, you're essentially raising your status and lowering theirs by saying, hey, I have all the answers and you don't. When you lower their status, you strip them of the confidence they need to make their own decisions. So instead of deciding what they should focus on, ask them, what's the real challenge here for you? You see, when someone's stressed and overwhelmed, everything feels like a challenge. But when you ask someone, what's the real challenge here? You get the person you're coaching to pause and look inward and determine what one challenge, if resolved, would provide the greatest relief. Or put another way, what rock in their backpack of challenges could you help them remove and alleviate the most amount of stress? Yesterday morning, cleaning my house would have provided me with a mild sense of relief, but I knew that finishing this video would provide me with the greatest sense of relief at that time. I find that the real challenge is often the challenge I'm avoiding most. So the next time you're coaching someone through a stressful situation and they insist on focusing on petty issues that you know won't matter a week from now, say, that sounds like a challenge, but what's the real challenge here for you? When you include the word you in your question, you make the question easier to answer. In a 1997 study, researchers discovered that when the word you was presented in a math question, students came to a solution faster and more accurately than if you was left out. So to help someone prioritize, ask them, what's the real challenge here for you? Once they discover their real challenge, help them develop a strategy to overcome that challenge by asking them the fourth and final question. If you're saying yes to this, what are you saying no to? In other words, if you're saying yes to dealing with this challenge, how are you going to make space to focus on that challenge? If you're saying yes to completing a challenging project, are you going to say no to useless meetings, even if saying no might upset your boss or your coworkers? If you're saying yes to being self-employed and turning that passion project into a profitable business, are you willing to say no to distractions and delete Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram off your phone? Are you willing to say no to watching TV at night and going out with friends on the weekend? Saying yes to overcoming a real challenge requires more time and energy than the person you're coaching may think. By asking, if you're saying yes to this, what are you saying no to? You're helping them strategically free up time and energy to focus on what matters. As business coach Michael Porter says, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. In the end, to be a great coach and a great leader, you must help others see a path forward by asking a series of questions. Ask what's on your mind to skip the chit chat and get to what matters. Ask what else to get them to dig deep and surface challenges they might be overlooking. Ask what's the real challenge here for you to help them focus on what matters most. And then ask if you're saying yes to this, what are you saying no to? 
to help them develop a strategy and commit to making progress. Stanier says, the change of behavior at the heart of what this book is about is this, a little more asking people questions and a little less telling people what to do. That was the core message that I gathered from The Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Stanier. This book contains many more great questions that you can use as a leader and a coach. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.